why is branch prediction important? So let's talk a little bit about motivation. Then we're going to move on and start talking about um, branch prediction and the two things we need to predict when we're predicting branches. And the top thing that jumps to mind is, is the branch taken or not, the outcome of the branch. But that's only half of the, half of the story. And today we're also going to talk about figuring out where you actually go when you take a branch. And when I say branch, we're going to loosely put any, all forms of control flow into this. So it's not just a branch, it's a branch, a jump. Um, you might even think about trying to put something like a interrupt, because that changes your control flow of your program, but most people try not to predict their interrupts. It's hypothetically possible. But let's start off by talking about why, why branch prediction and what is the big motivation for branch prediction. So as I said, um, longer pipelines and more complex pipelines require us to have relatively good accuracy trying to figure out when we take a branch or when we don't take a branch. So here we have our uh, in order issue, or excuse me, in order fetch, out of order issue, out of order execute, in order commit pipeline. And a couple things you should note here is, you know, we added this extra stage out here. We added this issue stage. But we also added this issue queue or instruction uh, buffer here or issue window, depending on what book you read, in the front here. Well, instructions pile up into this. And if you don't actually figure out if the branch is taken or not, let's say until somewhere here in the execute stage, then you're going to have more, basically, instructions you need to kill when you take a branch mispredict. So when you start to go to these out of order processors, when you sort of have this seemingly short pipeline, seemingly easy pipeline, more instructions can get uh, uh, sort of queued up into some of these structures, especially if you have a queue. So this effectively lengthens the front of your pipeline and makes it such that if you mispredict or you fetch the wrong instructions relatively often, you're just going to be out in the weeds. You're going to be killing lots of instructions and having done a lot of extra work that you didn't really want to do. So um, also, if you wait all the way to the end of the pipe in sort of these out-of-order processors to resolve your branch, that's also going to make life uh, even worse here because that makes your mispredict penalty even longer. Most people don't actually do that. I mean, you might say, oh, I don't want to actually kill instructions until I know the branch commits. And that was sort of our simplistic example we had uh, when we were talking about these out-of-order processors as we waited all the way to the end of the pipe and then sort of cleaned out things. Um, you can wait for it to go to the end of the pipe to actually fully clean out things, but you're going to want to redirect the front of the pipe or redirect the fetch or the PC in the front of the pipe as quickly as possible because you just don't want to be fetching off into the weeds because then you're just wasting cycles. Here we have, going back to our super pipelining uh, lecture that we had before, and we look at the for some real processors, the, the Pentium 3 and the Pentium 4, what their branch mispredict penalty is. And, you know, in this Pentium 4 here, you have 20-odd 20, 20 cycles here of branch mispredict penalty. That can be pretty painful if you take branch mispredicts quite often, because you're going to be taking branches, and the branch penalty is going to be quite, quite high if you uh, don't have the correct subsequent instructions after you. Now, you know, we talked about some techniques. You can just stall and wait, so you don't actually predict the branch. But then, if you have to wait for every branch to get to, let's say, the 20th stage of the pipe before you go and fetch the subsequent instruction, that's pretty painful. So we had talked about speculating the next PC, or the PC plus 4, we'll say, in a MIPS-style architecture, or an architecture where the, each instruction is 32 bits long. <clears throat> but that doesn't really help you when you're trying to predict um, or when it doesn't really help you if you have high probability you think the branch is going to be taken or you think the control flow is going to be taken. So you need to start thinking about how to actually deal with that in a pipeline. And up to this point, we've only talked about speculating the fall-through case. Uh, we talked briefly about speculating the non-fall-through case, but we didn't say how you could possibly do that. And today we're going to talk about what the hardware is to do that. Also making, making life worse is uh, if you start to go wide, this hurts also. So if we start to go wide here, let's say we have a dual issue processor, but if you go wide here, when you go to kill instructions, you're killing twice as many instructions in flight in the pipe. 
if you take a branch the wrong direction or mispredict a branch. So showing that from our uh, pipeline diagram perspective here, this is just recapping. We had seen this in a previous lecture. But here we have a fetch for this branch. And we're fetching two instructions per cycle here. So even if a relatively short uh, pipeline, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dead instructions on a mispredict. So what this really comes down to here is you have the pipeline width, or, or approximately how much stuff you end up getting killed, is the pipeline width multiplied by the branch penalty. So it's width times length uh, before you can resolve the branch. And if you can shorten the time it takes you to resolve the branch, that's good. Or if you can make the processor narrower, that may be good. It's good from you know, fewer instructions being killed, but we like to execute multiple instructions at a time because that improves our performance. <coughs> um, so this is really the motivation for thinking about trying to put something useful in this time here, and also trying to reduce the probability that we start fetching incorrect instructions at all. <coughs> 